When working with these techniques, uh, let's call them primitive in a lack of a better word, um, I try to control every aspect of the process as much as possible. I try to perfect my throwing technique. I read everything I find on glazes and uh, other people's experience with different techniques and so on. I try to control the kiln environment, schedules, wood, how much the wood is split even. To get uh, a feel of control here, because I feel the most interesting part for me is when I have a driven intention and that meets uh, the natural thing that is craft, clay, um, firing. And in that cross section where these parts mix, I find that I found, find the most interesting cups for me. And I've tried to pick those out for you in this exhibition. For instance, this is a primitive porcelain cup with a celadon type glaze on it. It's been fired in a wood kiln with salt in it. And you can see uh, the way around here how salt has affected the pot differently at different parts depending on how it's hit it. So for instance on uh, this side here quite a lot of uh, salt has hit and turned this glaze into a very flowing glaze that's pulled down into this very special foot. I made it specifically for this reason because I needed a large foot to collect all this excess glaze that might start to pool. Um, because with this technique, with this type of glaze, this type of clay and this type of design and shape, I wouldn't feel, it wouldn't feel right if you had a break mark here where glaze has pulled down, it got stuck to the shelf and I had to break it loose. That kind of damage wouldn't feel right here. So. On a, but on the other hand, for another pot, with another effect, it would be just right. So for this one, I had to have this goal in mind, making sacrifices and choices depending on that. So, um, yeah. This cup is a, a rather light stoneware clay, fired upside down in an anagama. So you can see it's been glazed on the lower part as well, but not on the inside, making this interesting line on the inside here, as the flame has moved in. But since it's been fired in the very front of the kiln, uh, you can see how the flame almost has touched every part of the pot, at least on the back side here. It's almost flown all the way around the pot before releasing and letting go. And in this quite intense atmosphere you have in the front of an anagamic kiln, the clay itself has started to be eaten away and you can see impurities in the clay coming forth, like these white, white stones here. making quite a lively landscape to look at. Opposite to this effect is a more controlled environment like the electric kiln where this has been fired. In that type of atmosphere, the clay won't have its life on its own in the same way. So I tried to play with that, uh, with a dark clay, transparent glaze, and a white slip that stands for the life in the pot. Uh, applied uh, in a banding here, leaving a small dark line extra here to hyphen the, the rim of the cup. And trying to find a, a flowing line that's interesting but not uh, overly done or too conscious. That's uh, art in its own right.
So the next part I want to show is special in its way that it's a little bit smaller than some of the cups, even though I have this cup next to this that's small as well. I like the feel of this cup because when you pick it up, the smallness make me may, is making me tender in my grip. And that that type of personality is very nice against this firing that's kind of on the opposite side. A little bit more stable and rough in its appearance. Fired on the side like this. With a small pot very on the very edge here as well. Shielding this one from, from flame and ash here. I like the shape also. Two finger grip. Or well, three finger grips. Hmm. <clears throat> the last cup in this series is a very special glaze type. It's been fired in an anagama kiln. It's a um, rather light clay. Uh, lightly colored stoneware clay and it's a glaze a vitreous slip on top you can see it's been reduction cool because there's no tendency towards white or yellow here it's just gray and the entire shape is gray with a little bit of tint of green here and there especially on the inside so this pot tells a very special story from the kiln. During the firing, the entire pot was grey, but during the cooling, in a special part of the kiln, in a special environment, it's almost impossible to create once again. These crystals creating during cooling became white. And that in combination with the thinness of the potting, foot and the delicate lines here makes the feel of a wild bird's egg quite strong and I think even though you might, might not be conscious about those connections it affects how you approach the pot and how you lift it up making a rather special bond possible.